This is Nick Rocher from the first team in Tampa Bay, and today I have an honor and privilege to interview Gary Cook, lead golf analyst for NBC Golf Channel, and also a 10-time champion on his three tours. How are you doing, Gary? Nick, I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing great. All right, Mr. Cook, you've accomplished so much in the world of golf, but what amazes me is your char charitable efforts with the first team program. Can you talk about the first team and how you got involved? Well, I got involved, Nick, uh, actually through uh, Mike Cooper years ago when uh, it was called the Urban Junior Golf. And I had met Mike Cooper and uh, asked him a lot about the program at the time. Uh, got involved somewhat, and then when it became uh, the first year at Tampa Bay, I tried to increase my involvement, and uh, I've been involved ever since. You have seen and played with maybe the two best players ever. Jack Nicholas and Tiger Woods. First, what are your memories from the 1986 Masters? Well, the 1986 Masters, Nick, I actually played in front of Jack Nicholas on that Sunday afternoon when he shot the 65 to win when he was 46 years old. Uh, my uh, playing uh, competitor was Bob Tway. The two of us played right in front of Jack and Sandy Lyle. And uh, I remember it being very loud, very loud. Uh, the crowds were uh, ecstatic, as you might imagine, with Jack doing so well. And, uh, it got to a point where Bob and I would have to literally look back, make sure Jack wasn't playing a shot uh, while we tried to play. But uh, it was certainly a very memorable afternoon, one where the hair on the back of my neck was standing up quite a bit. What's your favorite hole in the Masters course? Favorite hole at the Augusta? Uh, probably number 12. I'm not sure Jordan Spieth would say that, yeah. huh? but yeah. uh, uh, I always liked number 12. It was a great short hole. That's good. He called the 2001 Players' Championship. Your better than most call of Tiger's putt on 17 at Sawgrass was amazing. What are some of your memories of Tiger dominating this sport? Well, Tiger played the game for a short period of time there, Nick, really like unlike any other player that I had ever seen. Um, I had the privilege of playing with Jack a lot, playing against Jack a lot. Um, and Jack was clearly a dominant player in his time frame. But Jack had some areas of his game that by tour standards were really somewhat average. I mean, his short game around the greens, his bunker play, you know, were good, but I wouldn't call them great. Tiger came along, and it was like for a period of time there, he was the best in every aspect of the game. I mean, his short game was better than anybody else's. His putting was better than anybody else's. His ability to drive the ball long and straight was better than anybody else's. And he had iron shots that I had never seen anybody do. So, you know, for that short period of time, I would have said that Tiger was playing the game better than anybody I've ever seen. Is that the best, the best putt you've ever seen of all time? Um, yeah, you know, I guess I would say yes to that. Um, I think even if you asked Tiger, though, there was an element of luck in that putt. It was a great putt, don't get me wrong. Uh, to read the green properly and, and everything else was, was incredible. But, uh, you know, for it to go in, it, it, there was an element of luck. It's one of the hardest screens on tour, in my opinion. So, my golfer, my favorite golfer right now is Jordan Speed. He is 22 years old, and he already has seven wins on tour. But he had a couple bad swings at Augusta. Can you talk about his amazing class after the match and how Jordan will recover and continue? To win? Well, Nick, I have been so impressed with Jordan Speed. I mean, I have known him now literally since he was about 17 years old. The first time I had a chance to meet him was at one of the U.S. Amateurs that uh, when we were doing the broadcast of when, when uh, Jordan was playing. Um, the great thing to me about Jordan Spieth is no different now than he was now. He's literally the same person, even though he's had a tremendous amount of success. Um, yeah, he made a couple of bad swings and maybe a bad decision or two of the Masters, um, but he's 22 years old. He'll recover from that. Um, I think had he not already had one a green jacket, swallowing what happened would have been a lot harder. Um, but he's a resilient kind of guy. Uh, he's got a great team around him. He talks about that a lot. And um, I wouldn't be surprised at all if come the next major we see him in contention again. How many majors do you think he's going to win in his career? That's always a tough question. Um, I certainly think he has the potential and capability of winning double digit majors. Now, will that happen? It's really always hard to predict because the problem with majors, there's only four a year. So even if you have a really lengthy career, say last 20 plus years, you only have X number of chances to win um, compared to regular tournaments. 
So it's always hard to really predict and know for sure what's going to happen in major championships. But I, I like all, so many of the aspects of Jordan's game. I like his mental approach to the game. Um, and I think, uh, I think we'll see when double digit comes. All right. I'm 13 years old and want to play on the PGA Tour. After my playing days, I want to do your job. What should I be doing now to prepare? Well, I think you're doing a great job of it right now. Thank you. Uh, getting in front of people, being able to speak in front of people is, is a very important aspect, certainly, of what I do. Um, I worry a little bit about the younger generation. To me, they're learning to communicate using their thumbs and also their phones uh, in various different ways. Um, what I do now is about communication skills. So you have to be able to tell people what's going on. You have to be able to hopefully add to their enjoyment of what they're watching by adding uh, facts, maybe statistics, uh, maybe little stories about the person they're watching. Uh, but that's all boils down to communication skills. So I would highly recommend if you are serious about that after you play professional golf, which I hope you do, um, the more communications type courses you can take in school, uh, a lot of colleges have majors in telecommunications, broadcast journalism, so forth and so on. Do as much of that as you possibly can. Thank you for the tips. My pleasure. Mr. Koch, thank you so much for taking the time today for this interview. From all the first tee kids all over the USA, thank you for raising millions of dollars to help young kids like me play for little, little or no cost. All right. Thank you very much. Nick, it's a pleasure, and when I see young men like you, it makes it all worthwhile. All right.